Welcome to chapter C8, Sustainability Reporting in the Textbook on Sustainability Management. This chapter on sustainability reporting is actually one that I'm really excited about, well, the rest as well, but uh, this one especially because I'm doing lots of research on sustainability reporting myself. So let's have a look. After reading this chapter, you'll be able to do again a couple of things. You'll be able to differentiate various forms of sustainability reporting. You'll learn that sustainability reporting or sustainability disclosure is about providing information to different stakeholders. And you'll learn that sustainability reporting can cover anything from one pillar of sustainability to all three pillars of sustainability, depending on the reporting format. So we have um, sometimes uh, distinct uh, environmental reports. We also have sustainability reports that cover social and environmental issues. And we also have reports covering all three. For example, in um, uh, the area of integrated reporting. You'll be able to explain different types of so-called materiality. Materiality is um, a concept that defines which information a company should disclose to different types of information users. Uh, that is especially re relevant in sustainability because sustainability and sustainability management is such a vast topic and can basically cover anything from human rights to carbon um, performance and so on. And not all aspects are equally important for all types of information users. You'll learn that financial materiality has to be distinguished from non-financial materiality. And the main distinguishing element are the addresses of reporting. And you will le learn how that looks like. And then you'll be able to explain the different elements and principles of the uh, so-called GRI standards for sustainability reporting. GRI stands for Global Reporting Initiative. It's a multi-stakeholder worldwide initiative that actually sets standards for sustainability reporting, um, especially relevant in those cases where um, reporting is mostly voluntary or there are no uh, exact standards on how to report on sustainability issues. The GRI standards are comprised of different elements. They have universal standards, then you have sector specific standards that can be applied to specific industries. And there are also um, a large number of topic standards for different sustainability related topics, such as um, emissions, water use, how to treat employees and so on. They also cover eight general principles for sustainability reporting, and we will discuss what these are and why they are relevant for sustainability reporting in the chapter. Furthermore, you'll be also able to explain the relevance of and procedures for climate-related disclosures according to the so-called CDP. CDP was formerly called the Carbon Disclosure Project. Um, and that is a special topic in sustainability reporting um, that digs much deeper into specifically the aspect of climate-related disclosure, carbon-related disclosure. The CDP in that regard is the most important actor for climate or carbon-related reporting. And it annually sends out extensive questionnaires to lots of companies around the world, and it scores companies according to, um, to their reporting efforts. As another special topic, we'll have a look uh, at the idea of integrated reporting, and you'll be able to explain that idea, as well as its potential benefits and drawbacks for a reporting company. You will learn that integrated reporting aims at disclosing the interdependencies of different types of financial and non-financial capital for value creation. And that already gives you an idea why it's called integrated reporting, because it integrates financial and non-financial issues. And finally, you'll be able to discuss the relevance as well as different types of assurance for sustainability reporting. Reported um, sustainability information can be externally assured to increase confidence. Today, it's still mostly voluntary to do so. Uh, many companies, however, do that to increase uh, well, confidence and data quality. And there are two main forms of assurance. And these are limited and also reasonable assurance. And we will discuss the differences um, of these two elements of assurance. 
And as always, the book and the chapter comes with some features. We have just two here in this chapter, but there are many uh, very interesting tasks uh, related to the different elements of sustainability reporting. So I hope you look forward to that. Uh, the two features are first uh, sustainability and research feature. That is about the article by uh, Gray, Cooey and Labor uh, from 1995 on uh, sustainability reporting, obviously. And we have an interesting feature, a short one on sustainability in business about Volkswagen's 2014 sustainability report in light of the diesel emission scandal that surfaced at that point of time. I hope you find it interesting and wish you lots of fun with this chapter.